So we can start. Uh, thank you very much for joining uh, this webinar about uh, uh, our new tool, new calculation tool, cold room calculation tool. And I renew to you all uh, the good morning. And just a few words to, about me to introduce myself. My name is uh, Corrado and I'm a member of the technical uh, office of Rascal as a product development specialist, specialist research and development. I've been working at Rascal since 2019 and I deal with um, the management and development of the Rascal selection software, um, the design of uh, compressor test benches, and then the evaluation of compressor performance. Let's take a look at the presentation agenda. I will give you um, an overview about Frasco for those who don't know uh, about the company. Don't worry, I know that you already may already have attended uh, some of our presentations, so I will try to be brief in this overview. Then I will give you an overview about uh, the cold room, so with benefits and features. We will later talk about uh, this new tool we have recently developed and integrated uh, in the Frasco selection software and the Frasco cold room calculation tool with features and benefits. And we will show how this tool works directly in our selection software. So let's start with the overview about Frascold. Who is Frascold? Frascold is a leading Italian company that has been operating for more than 80 years in the world of refrigeration and air conditioning, building up to 70,000 units compressor per year at our facility outside Milan. We support the customer uh, during their development journey, providing refrigeration and air conditioning solution for the specific cooling challenge. Frasco developed, produced, and market compressor all over the world for a wide variety of applications, such as commercial refrigeration, using, as you know, refrigerant with low GWP due to restrictive uh, uh, regulation in Europe uh, as FGAS, and so HFO blends refrigerant, hydrocarbon, with a focus on uh, propane, and also carbon dioxide. Process cooling, using by many uh, manufacturing industries to remove heat from processes. Then uh, industrial refrigeration concerning uh, for example, the treatment and preservation of foodstuffs, uh, chemical and oil industry, and uh, also ice production. So all application where the goal is to remove it from large scale process or materials. And finally, uh, comfort. So to meet comfort requirements of uh, the occupants of the condition space. So, our mission uh, uh, is to offer innovative, innovative solutions to become the best partner for our customer and the benchmark of the market. Frasco works uh, closely with partners promoting long-term relationships based on the continuous development of innovative and sustainable solutions to improve, of course, efficiency and follow, because it's very important, the new market needs. Our goal is to support customer during every stage of compressor life. So from the selection to the after sale and service, all at the same level of attention. For this reason, we have recently created a Frasco competence team that will work side by side with customers bringing, of course, know-how and expertise. Quality and reliability are, for us, fundamental parameters, and this is the reason why, for example, every compressor is run-tested before it leaves the factory. What we offer, so, is quite simple, you know, but not trivial, because our products, solutions, and last but not least, services 
that allow our customer to obtain advantages in terms of performance and energy efficiency. So after this long but uh, necessary introduction, I'm really pleased now to introduce you to this new cold room calculation tool, which is already available on the Frasco selection software for a few months, starting from the latest version of the software, so the 1.15, which can be downloaded directly from our website, frasco.it. In the specific case uh, of uh, perishable products, cold room are essential to increase the durability of these products and so their storage life. So it is important to not uh, change the, the organoleptic and uh, um, aromatic uh, properties such as texture, uh, color, uh, taste and so on. In addition, cold room allow to manage seasonal variation of products in production and sale. And finally, cold room allow to ensure a proper transport uh, of products. So for those uh, who need to be shipped, for example, from uh, the producer to wholesalers, uh, markets, and of course, to the final consumers. In order to obtain uh, these, uh, it is fundamental to have cold room that are able to create and maintain a specific room condition, and so a lower temperatures than the surroundings and a, an appropriate level of humidity. One of the problems that may occur is, for example, the weight loss of some products, especially uh, products with a high content of water, and so uh, due to dry up of this product and caused, for example, by long storage periods. This results, of course, in a loss of quality. And to avoid this problem, it is possible, for example, to realize a rapid cooling of the surface of products, keeping a high level of humidity. So this is why humidity is also important. To obtain uh, this room condition, of course, is uh, fundamental, essential to decrease uh, the heat transfer into the room. Uh, and so this is what the reason why insulating materials require a special attention and allow to create a sort of thermal barrier for the refrigerated space. A cold room should match, of course, different storage requirements and uh, keeping perfect storage condition of products. In the refrigeration sector, it is uh, customary to distinguish between uh, two main types of cold room based uh, on uh, different storage requirements, different storage temperature. And we identify for that reason uh, chilled or storage products, which can, uh, with storage temperature, higher than zero degree Celsius and lower than minus 18 degree Celsius respectively. Another problem uh, that uh, may occur is the formation of ice crystals uh, with temperature below zero degree Celsius. And this process, as uh, what we have seen before, may damage some products and change the quality. This is why many products uh, a store at temperature slightly uh, above the starting freezing point of the, of the product itself. And to prevent uh, this, uh, this problem, this uh, ice crystal formation, uh, the freezing process uh, is done as quick as possible so that the ice crystals have little time to grow. And even if uh, this formation may influence the quality, especially the texture of the product. There are no adverse effects in terms of nourishment and content of vitamins because this, the composition of vitamins is very low at low temperature. The equipment that is able to create and maintain uh, this room condition of temperature and humidity should be selected, of course, in the right way. 
and uh, starting from the compressor, of course, because it's the beating heart of every uh, refrigerating system. So, one of uh, the main goal is therefore the, to select the most suitable compressor. And uh, Frasco uh, cold room calculation tool uh, give the possibility to estimate the cooling capacity according to each specific storage requirements. So why choose uh, this uh, Frasco cold room calculation, calculation tool? To be an essential tool uh, for designer, uh, for designer uh, construct, constructor, constructor and consultings, it must, be, it must be an accurate tool it must be an sorry. It must be an accurate tool that consider uh, all parameters needed, such as the side of the side sides of the cold room, uh, the average external temperature, the insulation values, and the category of food to preserve. Then, uh, one of the main strengths uh, uh, that is uh, that that the tool has is that it is fully integrated in the Frasco selection software. And for that reason, uh, it is not necessary to use uh, different uh, uh, software on different platforms to select the most suitable, suitable compressor. It is also available uh, uh, for all compressor and not only for air condensing unit. And uh, uh, this allow to automatically uh, find the, the best compressor that fits the, um, the cooling capacity required. And it is available in the selection calculation mode. We will see later uh, directly on the software. And finally, it is uh, user friendly. So allow an estimation of the cooling capacity required in very few, in very few minutes. So to summarize, this Frasco Core Calculation Tool provides an easy way to get quick and accurate results, and last but not least, is user-friendly. So the cooling capacity uh, required by a cold room is uh, affected and influenced by many different factors, including the heat transmission through the room envelope, so that is the heat transfer into the refrigerated space through walls, uh, floor, and of course ceiling. The infiltration of air, that is the heat associated with the entering um, of broad entering of air uh, into the refrigerated space due to door openings. The cooling freezing or freezing of product, that is the heat uh, removed from products that are daily brought. Uh, into and kept in the refrigerated space. And finally, the internal heat ge generation. That is the heat produced by live in food, uh, you know, uh, veg vegetable and fruits uh, are, live, are, are live in food and respire. So from uh, uh, sugar and oxygen, they produce uh, uh, carbon dioxide uh, and water and energy. So uh, other uh, internal generation is connected to light, uh, also to light, cooler fans, the frosting, and people that working inside the room. It therefore, it therefore becomes uh, uh, essential to consider all these as aspects to obtain a precise estimation of the cooling capacity required. So let's now discover how this uh, cold room calculation tool works in our software. Uh, first of all, as I said before, if you haven't done yet, you can download the software from our website, frasquel.it, and uh, in, you will find it in the download section. So we will see now the selection software. This is the start screen page. Uh, you will see all the compressor you can select from, uh, from the software. So in this case, we choose the air condensing units.
and this is the page the, uh, the, the page for the selection in which you can see all the operating condition you can choose different uh, uh, air condensed unit uh, of different family different refrigerants and here you will find uh, uh, the operating condition that you can select so in this case the cold room calculation tool is available if you click on the top on the right the selection calculation mode and this uh, this kind of selection uh, allow uh, to select the refrigerating capacity required and in the specific case of the cold room this capacity uh, this first value will be uh, changed after the cold room estimation of the capacity required so you can click uh, in this box the cold room calculation and the tool will open uh, this uh, this form with different uh, section that is uh, in uh, correlated to the different kind of sources we have seen before so there is the first one, uh, the general one, which require uh, the general um, characteristics, characteristics of the room. So the, the room dimension, length, width, uh, and height, uh, and the room condition. You can also see um, this info button that help to clarify some point of the calculation tool. For, for example, the operating hours that you can select uh, here in, uh, under room condition um, of the cooling system affect the dimensioning capacity required. So uh, at the same time, both operating hours and temperature difference between the air inside the room and the refrigerant in the coil influence the humidity of the room and the duration of the defrost. So here, this is uh, one of the most important section because you can uh, select uh, the temperature, so the, the temperature inside the room, then the relative humidity and the operating hour of the refrigerating system. The next session is uh, the transmission. And here you have to consider, uh, you have to quantify uh, the heat correlated to the different temperature uh, of the surroundings. So in this case, uh, we can see the info button, surrounding condition, so ventilation and temperature, directly influence the heat transmission through the envelope of the room, so through uh, walls, ceiling and floor. The temperature below floor may also be lower than that of the surrounding. Typically is uh, 10 degrees minus than that of the surroundings and the latter is usually equals to the ambient air temperature so in this case you can choose different kind of ventilation uh, still air or ventilated that are referred to surrounding condition so in this case uh, uh, we use a, a typical value of uh, um, thermal coefficients uh, in this case, you can choose also the temperature of the surrounding and the temperature below floor that, as we said before, is typically 10 degrees Celsius uh, lower than that of the surroundings. Then the, we can find the insulating materials. The insulating materials, as we have seen, uh, and their thickness strongly influence the overall heat transfer coefficient and the transmission through the envelope of the room. We have seen that require insulating materials require a special attention. Two different type of uh, selections are available. In this case, the standard one allows to choose between different insulating material commonly used in standard application and typically typical value of the thermal conductivity has been assumed in this case for one for each materials the other one is the custom selection that allows to set the thermal conductivity of the insulating material 
for those who know, uh, perfectly know the goodness of their insulating materials. And both selections consider a different contribution for wall, ceiling, and floor. And I assume that concrete is the structural element of the room. So for concrete, we assume a typical thermal resistance value. Resistance value. So in this case, for example, you can select and unselect the floor insulation because sometimes uh, no floor insulation is uh, required. And uh, after this, you can select the two different types of uh, selection. So the standard one, there is a, a division between uh, the contribution of walls, ceiling, and floor. So you can specify different uh, thickness of the insulating material chosen. And then uh, you can also select a uh, uh, different kind uh, uh, of, of insulating material. And we assume a typical value of the thermal conductivity. In the case of the floor, uh, just uh, some more word about the glass fiber and mineral wool, because you can select these two kinds of insulating material, but in the specific case of floor, uh, this material has no structural strength. So it is better to not choose these two materials and choose the other one. We will specify uh, this uh, uh, from the next uh, release of the software. The other one is the custom, custom selection that allows to also to, uh, as the other one, to select the thickness. So different thickness for walls, ceiling, and floor. And then it is possible to select the specific value of the conductivity of the insulating material. So in this case, this is the typical value of polyurethane, but you can also select different values. And you can also choose uh, different units, so IP or SE. The other section is the connected to the infiltration, so to the exchanges, air exchanges with uh, caused by um, the door openings. So it is important to specify also uh, the temperature that, as you have seen before, is the same uh, of the surroundings, but could be also different. Um, and then uh, the, the relative humidity of the air outside uh, the room, and then the door openings. So in this case, uh, we can see that the number of door openings affect uh, the amount of uh, air exchange between the room and uh, the outside. So uh, selecting the frequency, we, we will see there is the possibility to select uh, frequent uh, uh, regular or rare door openings. A simple correlation uh, take uh, from literature gives uh, the number of daily door openings as a function of the room uh, volume. So if you increase uh, in the general section uh, the dimension of the rooms, this uh, correlation will give different results uh, according to um, the frequency you have selected. The custom frequency allows you to set uh, a different number of the door openings, so instead of this uh, correlation. So we can see frequent, uh, for example, we are selecting the general section, these uh, dimensions, and here we can see that if you change the, the frequency from uh, frequent to rare, regular and rare, will change also the number of daily openings. But if you set, uh, you have uh, an, a specific idea of the number of daily openings, uh, you can also set your number. So a different number, for example, eight. The next section is uh, correlated to products. So in this case, uh, uh, the products are divided into categories and can be selected from this drop-down list. The product replacement 
so we can see the quantity replaced here, is considered as a continuous process uh, during uh, this uh, dimensioning day, and the cooling capacity demand uh, is influenced by the average daily quantity replaced by the temperature uh, difference of products. So here you can specify the inlet temperature, and so we, with this different temperature, we refer to the difference between this inlet temperature and the temperature of the room, and by the cooling time required to bring products uh, to the room temperature. So you can specify in this box uh, the cooling time required for each product you select. Vege vegetable and fruits, as we said before, generate heat uh, as a consequence of the respiration process and heat generation increase with room temperature. So we consider, uh, in this calculation tool, we consider different correlation that uh, gives uh, different, uh, uh, an, a different heat production uh, with different temperature. So we consider the temperature of the room and, uh, and so a specific value of uh, heat generation correlated to this temperature. Uh, this respiration contribution to the dimensioning capacity is affected by the quantity of product stock in the room. So this, uh, this quantity that you can specify here affects only uh, the respiration process with the uh, product that, that of course uh, has uh, this problem, this respiration. So vegetable and uh, fruits. We can see there is the possibility uh, to select uh, the product type, so vegetables, fruits, fish, uh, meat, uh, dairy product. So we can see some dairy product like, like butter and uh, also other product, uh, eggs, ice cream, uh, baker's yeast. Uh, so there are a lot of products that can be selected, uh, probably more than 70 products. And uh, in this case, you can also add um, different products. So you can add, for example, eggs, but also vegetable with different uh, uh, inlet temperatures, so with different parameters. You are not, uh, um, you are able to select more than one and not only one. And here uh, on the right, you can see also another section that could be Mm, very useful with the storage requirements. So in this case, there is another info that specify that the storage requirements are general guidelines. So what you see here is just uh, our general guideline and they be different according to specific characteristic of products and uh, post harvest condition, of course. The maximum stock quantity that you can see here, uh, the maximum stock quantity is estimated according to the percentage of room available uh, for products. So assuming and assuming uh, an average bulk density, so we consider in this bulk density also the vacuums and uh, of course rooms uh, are usually not completely filled uh, with products because uh, uh, space is required to move uh, around the room. So for people who work uh, inside uh, the room and also for trans pallet or tracks that uh, need to bring products inside the room. So here you can see that if you change uh, product, uh, change also the storage requirements of uh, minimum temperature and maximum temperature because it's difficult to give uh, a specific value of uh, storage temperature. So typically you will see a temperature range and also for uh, relative humidity, uh, typically you will see a, a humidity range. And then uh, you will see the maximum stock quantity that is correlated to the percentage of room utilization that you have selected. So if you select a different number, 
of the percentage of room, they will change also the maximum stock quantity. So we have seen that there is also the possibility to delete uh, products if, if you have done mistakes. And uh, in this case, we can add, for example, artichokes, okay. The next section, so the final section before the results, uh, is correlated, associated with uh, the internal generation. So we have seen uh, cooling fan that are supposed uh, the, that the cooling fans operate while the cooling system is active. So we don't need uh, to specify the duration because, of course, they work uh, uh, with the cooling system and it is possible to set uh, different power absorbed. So in this case, you can select a different value of the, of the power. Then the defrosting is quite important. Uh, there are two different uh, defrosting methods that can be chosen. The natural defrosting requires room temperature, of course, uh, higher than zero degree Celsius. In practice, uh, it's more than two, three degrees Celsius uh, to make uh, this process easier. And during the defrost period, the cooling system is stopped and fans uh, continue to operate. And so for this reason, the power absorbed uh, by the cooling system is the same that we have specified here for the cooling fans. So you can see that this power is not possible to change this value because it's the same of the cooling fans. Uh, the other possibility is the electric uh, defrosting that is realized uh, activating electrical resistance elements during the defrost period. Uh, there is the possibility in this case to select, to set the power absorbed because it's not correlated anymore with the power of cooling fan. So if we select the electrical defrosting, you can see uh, that you can set uh, different power uh, of the electrical elements. So for both uh, selection, natural and electrical, you can specify the number of uh, defrost per day uh, for this typical dimension in day and then also the duration of, uh, is, uh, of uh, each defrost cycle. Finally, we can set uh, uh, also other sources uh, to evaluate its, their contribution as internal heat generation and different heat sources such as uh, lights, people may be selected as additional contribution to the internal heat generation the heat generated from people inside the room is dependent on their grade of activity. For example, could be at rest, moderate work, hard work. We have considered different typical value to estimate uh, these different kind of work. And other heat sources, maybe related, for example, to product packaging, trucks, and so on, you can estimate uh, um, the contribution of this uh, other load here. So we have seen light, for light you can specify the power and also the time per day. And people, as we have seen, you can specify different uh, kind of work inside uh, of people inside the room and could be, for example, moderate work. And also uh, the number of people and the time. If you want to specify uh, other sources, you can select uh, here a different uh, power and uh, the time uh, of that uh, sources. Finally, we can see the results. Here are collected uh, all uh, the dimensioning loads divided uh, uh, into, diff into different categories. So we have the transmissions, uh, infiltration, uh, product cooling, and product respiration. So because we have selected uh, a vegetable artichoke, so we have uh, a product respiration. 
if you select for example a different uh, a different product for example fish we can see that the contribution of the product reservation is obviously uh, zero so then we have selected uh, nat natural defrosting so the contribution is uh, uh, indicated here uh, the light uh, the contribution of people and also other contrib contribution we have not selected uh, anything so here you can find the dimension in load uh, of the cold room it is the final results and is a simply sum of all these contribution it could be also useful to print uh, uh, the selection so we can try to print uh, uh, the selection let me choose the pdf okay so we can see how it works here you can find uh, all uh, uh, the um, what we have set before so the divided into the section we have analyzed before so the general section with all uh, room uh, uh, dimensions and conditions the transmission uh, with surrounding conditions uh, temperature insulating materials uh, with the kind of selection you have chosen uh, and then also infiltration products uh, and uh, internal generation and then in the second page you will find uh, only the results so divided into the different section the different contribution and then what you need that is the dimension in load uh, something that could be very useful is for example for example are warnings that in this case maybe if you set uh, uh, a wrong value of the um, of the temperature inside the room uh, you will see some warnings in the results section. So uh, this warning specify, for example, that the surrounding temperature is lower than that of the cold room. So this is obviously a mistake. This is something strange. And so we consider that the load correlated to transmission is uh, zero. For the same thing is, uh, we can say, for infiltration, product, uh, uh, cooling, and so on. It is possible, uh, for example, another warning, another kind of warning is, for example, if you do not select any product. So you will see also results, but uh, uh, there is a warning that uh, remember you that uh, you don't have selected. So this result could be uh, wrong. Another warning, for example, if you set uh, a very low temperature of the room you will see that uh, the dimension load is very high and this is why why uh, one or more products will be frozen so you have set uh, um, starting from the inlet temperature of this product and uh, the room temperature uh, to bring uh, the product to the room temperature, uh, the product will be uh, will, will freeze. So this will influence the dimension in load, as we have seen. So you can uh, uh, set many different things, and also have uh, warnings that remember you that something could be wrong. So if you click uh, at, at the end of the selection um of the estimation of the cooling capacity if you click ok you will see that this value will change the the value of refrigerating capacity uh, you have previously selected and automatically uh, the software will automatically uh, select the most suitable uh, condensing unit that allow to realize the cooling capacity required by the cold by the cold room and estimated with this tool so we have seen how the tool works directly on our software let's go back to the presentation 
as we have seen, uh, um, cold room uh, are very essential to guarantee the durability of the products and many different factors uh, need to be considered to estimate the cooling capacity demanded so that uh, these tools uh, need to be accurate and so we have to consider many different factors without changing uh, um, the, the fact that the, the tool could, should be easy to use. And the cold room calculator provides an easy way to get quick and accurate results. As we have seen, it is possible to do um, the estimation in very few minutes. And of course, one of the main strengths is that you can do an immediate selection of the most suitable uh, compressor that meets all the required conditions. And uh, so, uh, thank you very much uh, for, for, for your attention and also for more updates uh, about frascos. You can uh, case study also and uh, so on, uh, news. You can uh, follow us on the main communication channels and uh, in the blog section of our website. And uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, I will appreciate, we will appreciate uh, your comments and suggestions to improve this tool. So thank you very much. Now I will see if there are questions. Let me check. Okay, we have uh, just received uh, some questions. Uh, for example, they asked me if it is possible, oh, this is port, it is, it is possible to add uh, uh, more products. Uh, yeah, we have uh, already added, as you see, uh, as you've seen before, many products, uh, but of course, uh, if you need uh, a specific product, uh, you can uh, ask us, uh, you can uh, write us, uh, and we will try to add uh, uh, the product you need. The main problem is to find uh, um, thermal characteristic, in particular the specific uh, heat, heat capacity of each product, but we can try to, um, to add all the product that you need. And uh, also another question, uh, yeah, um, if it's possible to choose mean values, this could be also uh, something very useful, mean values for products, for, uh, for example, vegetable, mean values for vegetable, and not only a specific uh, product. Yeah, we will, uh, it, now it's not possible to do this, but uh, this kind of selection will be available from the next uh, release of the software. So we will integrate uh, uh, the mean value for all products, so vegetable, meat, uh, fish, uh, and so on. Let me check. Okay, there are some other questions. Uh, do you consider uh, the solar irradiation, uh, the contribution due to solar irradiation? No, uh, we don't consider this um, this kind of contribution because uh, it is supposed that uh, the room uh, of course is not uh, exposed uh, to, to the sun and so uh, it is difficult to also to consider this contribution and uh, moreover uh, the contribution due to solar irradiation is small compared to to that from uh, from um, to the heat um, absorbed from the outer surface of the room, so correlated to um, to the surrounding temperature. Then let me check other questions. 
Yeah, of course, uh, uh, they asked me uh, the difference uh, if there is a, a huge difference between uh, products when you select, uh, for example, artichokes rather than apple. Uh, you know, uh, products uh, are quite similar. The specific capacity of all product uh, is very a little, so if you don't have uh, your specific product don't be afraid uh, don't worry you can uh, uh, choose something similar without uh, affecting uh, the results so mm, there are no problem we can try to find to uh, estimate the, um, the thermal characteristic of the product you need but if you are not able to find the specific product you can choose something that is similar so and uh, so another question is uh, uh, the structural material consider in, uh, in the selection yes as I said uh, briefly before we consider uh, that the room is made of concrete and so in this case uh, we have supposed we have uh, uh, supposed a typical value from literature of the uh, thermal resistance of concrete uh, we have chosen this uh, this kind of uh, uh, structural element because it is the most common but in the future uh, we, we we can also consider different uh, different kind of uh, structural elements such as brick, uh, wool uh, and so on. So it is possible, yeah, another question, it is possible to select, um, to do the selection of compress also with uh, uh, freezing temperature of the room, of course, and uh, yeah, there are a lot of questions and uh, I think I can also answer to, to this question uh, by email because the time is, uh, uh, is over. And uh, I renew uh, the thank you uh, to you all. Um, and of course, uh, you know, it is very important your, uh, also your um, suggestions about, uh, as I said before, about to how to improve uh, uh, this calculation tool. Uh, and uh, of course, I remember you also that you can uh, follow uh, the other uh, webinar about the selection software and uh, that are very useful to understand uh, uh, how to set uh, the operating condition you need uh, with the, our selection software. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. For your attention and uh, keep in touch. Thank you.